Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 29th, 2024. Let's get into it. So the first uh, big news, uh, well now we have 10 million illegal immigrants, which is actually bigger than the population of Ohio in the United States. What is wrong with the Democrats? Why do you want this? I don't even get it. I mean, you know, your cities are being flooded. I mean, right now, for example, for me to get health care at the VA, because the Biden administration has ordered that illegal immigrants be taken care of, sometimes in front of veterans, it takes me six to eight months to get an appointment at the VA because the illegal immigrants are being taken care of. What the hell is wrong with the Democrats, man? I mean, I, I don't even understand that. Uh, by the way, on a, on a personal note, uh, some people do kind of ask me about my, uh, my health. Uh, so today, a, actually a friend, uh, I have very few friends and because uh, that's why I wear this shirt all the time, does not get along well with others. <laughs> so, but I, we went for a bike ride and I did a hell of a lot better than I thought and I am absolutely wiped out. And for me to be making this video, especially when I want to watch the Detroit Lions, uh, hopefully, uh, I, well, hopefully you appreciate it. So, because uh, this, I can't get the video up until tomorrow. Well, just which is the 29th. Today's the 28th, actually. All right, so let's get into. Uh, we we might have. Well, I, I these numbers seem astounding to me. Seventy thousand trucks, seven hundred thousand trucks heading towards the border in support of uh, Texas. To secure the border because uh, the Biden administration and the federalities, uh, well, the Democrats, they hate, they hate the United States and they hate the border. So uh, we'll see. Maybe Texas will be able to secure the border. Uh, and they said they're not going to yank down the wire. And I'm sure you've kind of followed along on that if you follow my channel at all. Uh, and I did find out for sure that the Florida State Guard, now they didn't send the National Guard because the National Guard can be nationalized. So here in Florida, we have what's called a state guard. Uh, and I, by, by the way, I got asked to join the state guard, but I told them I, I would love to do it. And maybe I could probably help, you know, with things like cybersecurity or something. But I'm too crippled to serve in any sort of uh, military function for, for the most part. Uh, but anyway, the reason that the state guard was sent is because uh, Biden and the Democrats can't nationalize them. And I uh, and then so we'll see. And by the way, red states uh, join the cause. Now I I do have a question. One of the things that I've been seeing is North Carolina is not part of the Republican states that are supporting Texas. Now North Carolina's a deep, supposedly deep red state. They the, both their House and their Senate are deep red. And they're well, I guess. And and so I contacted a friend of mine. And he says, well, their governor is a rhino. He's a Democrat. Who knew? He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. North Carolina, man, get rid of your governor. Holy moly, you got to get rid of this guy. Kind of like we got to get rid of lunatics like Lindsey Graham. We'll get into that here soon. Um, before I continue with my notes, uh, let's get into the most recent news because you're going to want that up front. So uh, Boris Rosin clarifies that the number of wounded soldiers at the Al- Top base in Syria. By the way, notice how he says in Syria. The United States is saying these wound, these soldiers were wounded in Jordan, and Jordan came out and said, "No, hell no, these troops were in Syria. We don't have any bases in Jordan." So you can see how the Biden administration and the Western news tries to portray all this. And, and speaking of news, how many of you even heard about the International Court of uh, what criminal International Court of Justice? ruling on the fact that uh, Israel is committing genocide. And by the way, the United States and a lot of the Western countries just cut off all humanitarian aid to, uh, to Gaza. So now we are active participants in the genocide, which the international court ruled is a genocide for the most part. Uh, they just said that, you know, Israel needs to cease. Uh, and, and, and by the way, it's coming back to the court in a month. But you know what Israel said? Let me, let me put up the finger. Let's do it. Yeah, they said that. They said that to the international. So they, they killed another 200 kids today. So yeah, they're, they're, they're 
not even listen. What's what's the purpose of the UN if if no we use the UN to perpetrate the war in Iraq, remember? And so now that it comes against the United States and against Israel and the Western countries, they just say, well, you know, so what? It was an almost unanimous decision against us, but you know we're going to ignore them. We don't care. International law don't mean anything to the United States, Israel, or the Western countries. But let's just keep going. Um, the U.S. soldiers in Syria had risen up to 34, all being taken by helicopter to Jordan in accordance with international law, uh, which is now happily disappearing thanks to U.S. efforts. American troops are illegally in Syria. Yeah, yes, we are occupying territory of a sovereign country. So I've been talking about this. These troops are there to get killed. What kind of sick Democrat administration keeps U.S. troops in harm's way just so they can get a few of them killed, just so they can start a regional war in the Middle East? That's how sick the Democrats are. Just want to say, I'm just saying, because the second a bomb drops in Iran, all our troops in Iraq, all our troops in Syria are going to get bombed the shit out of and they're going to die in huge numbers. And then, of course, the United States is going to use that to say, oh, oh yeah, we need more bombs on Iran. We need to go to all-out war. We can't even afford it. We're $34 trillion in debt. What the hell is wrong with the damn Democrats? All right, let's keep going. So that illegal base is here in only two functions. Block a main road from Iraq to Damascus and infiltrate the desert with terrorists like US, the U.S. tool ISIS. So let's get to the next uh, one here. This is a this is a new channel, Mother's Silver Rape, and I you know I talk about silver and I talk about precious metals quite a bit, and I'm definitely encouraging you to buy them where you can. Uh, pay down your debt. Uh, don't increase your debt. You know, don't go out to eat. I mean, these are times to be living lean and mean. But let's just see what this person says. I thought this was a pretty good comment. Silver comes out of the ground at 7 to 1. So if a metal is coming out of the ground, when he says 7 to 1, that's 7 to 1 silver to gold. Okay, so in reality, if, if, if things were all equal, the ratio of silver to gold should be 7 to 1. Okay, that's why I buy silver. I've been telling you to buy silver. All right. You've got to protect yourself. The dollar is trash, man. It's going to be worthless, I think, within the next year. And that's one of my predictions. I'm working on my predictions for 2024. I still haven't gotten it out. But let's just continue because I thought this was a great. How did the price fixers justify this? Continuing to rig the price of silver? What happens when there is a silver shortage in the future? Who is to blame? Not the silver stackers. It's the price fixers. And he pointed out right now the price of silver is 88 to 1. So great, great tweet uh, by Mother Silver, Silver Ape, Mother Silver Ape. <laughs> I, was, I wanted to say rape, but no, the R there. Uh, here's a Canadian prepper. I tell you what, uh, I, I do watch this guy. Uh, he was replying to Real Cynical Fox. You're $34 trillion in debt. Your cities have fallen apart. States are revolting, and you want to dump another $10 trillion into a decade-long conflict, which will jack the price of oil and inflation. I mean, I knew you weren't right, but you never cease to amaze me how stupid you are. <laughs> I just like he's probably into a Democrat. I, yeah, we're going to go to war with Iran? $34 trillion in debt? Pull the damn troops out of Iraq and Syria? Get them out of harm's way? redeploy them to places where they could uh, actually serve the strategic interest of the United States, and then we can think about things. But no, no, the Democrats want, they're the warmongering Democrats, they want war with Iran. So let's keep going. Breaking. Multiple U.S. lawmakers are calling for war with Iran. This is just more of the same. Multiple lawmakers want to directly hit Iran with, after a deadly attack on U.S. troops in the Middle East. In addition, Lindsey Graham, Senator John Cor Cornyn, C-O-R-N-Y-N. Who is John Cornyn? What state does he serve? Anyway, made this call. Target Tehran, he wrote. Republican Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas 
The only answer to these attacks must be a devastating military retaliation against Iran's terrorist forces, both in Iran across the Middle East. Anything less will confirm Joe Power Biden is a cowardly, unworthy of being commander in chief. So you see how the Republicans and the Democrats are lining up these neocon lunatics. As soon as we bomb Iran, I mean, it's regional war. What are you, and we're going to fight a war in Ukraine? We're going to fight China? I mean, how many wars do the warmonger Democrats and the neocon Republicans want us to fight around the world? This is the most ridiculous thing that I'm seeing. Let's get back to my notes for just a minute. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> All right, so there was a huge Israeli rally. Uh, they were protesting Netanyahu, but not for the right reasons. They're not protesting protesting the fact that he's committing genocide in Gaza. They, they're more worried about the hostages and, and the fact that Israel, they gassed their own hostages. There was three hostages. They, I mean, after the Holocaust and all the Jews were gassed. And, and you know what, let's, let's get to the first video because I thought this was amazing. So here is uh, Putin, the evil Putin, the, the warmongering Putin, talking about the fact that uh, the siege of Leningrad and that how Russia liberated Auschwitz. Okay, now remember that was one of the Jewish, that was the big, I think it was the biggest concentration camp where millions of Jews were executed and gassed to death. Let's watch that video. January 27th is one of the most important dates in our shared national history. On this day, in 1945, the Red Army ended the siege of Leningrad, and one year later, in 1945, they liberated Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. These two events, we cover, and they happened during the same era, the suffering of the people in Leningrad, as well as those who were imprisoned in Auschwitz, they demonstrate the horrible nature of Nazism and the needless suffering of innocent civilians. For 80 years, we have been feeling the pain for these tragic losses, for these lost destinies, for all those who had to endure this suffering. And we have been passing on this attitude from one generation to another. There is no statute to, of limitations regarding these crimes, the crimes committed by Nazis and their accomplices who planned and who carried out the genocide against the Soviet people. These crimes were perpetrated not on the battlefield, mass atrocities and killings of armless people, the elderly, women, and the people with disabilities were part of a system, a punitive system, and the Soviet Union had so many losses during the Great Patriotic War, and more than half of them were civilians, which clearly demonstrates that the Nazis and their satellites were not fighting against a political regime or an ideology. No, their goal was to invade our territory and to take over our natural resources and to exterminate our population. And those who were supposed to live were supposed to live as slaves. So they wanted to destroy our language and our culture. And we can see this is many Nazi documents. And this has found its way in the killings of and atrocities perpetrated by the Nazis Babi Yar, Hattin, Zmijowska, Balka, and other mass atrocities are just a few examples of the executions carried out by the Nazis. There was a system of ghettos, of prisons in Germany, in Austria, in Holland, in Poland, in the Soviet Union. And there was a death camp here in Gatchina, where we are today, and nearby there was a camp for children, very small, almost infants, and Nazis literally took their blood for their soldiers. There was unprecedented atrocities and cynicism 
in the siege of Leningrad, the decision by the Nazis to kill people living in a city. A million civilians died from hunger, from the cold, from endless bombing and shelling. And prominent historians studied documents dating back from this era. And the court has handed out its verdict that this was an act of genocide and we will investigate other crimes perpetrated against our civilians during the Great Patriotic War. And uh, the people who died during this Nazi genocide, uh, they are the ones who are celebrated by this memorial we're opening today. It is designed to serve as a symbol of our sacred duty to investigate all crimes and to hold the perpetrators accountable. It is important for us today and it will be important for our future as well. We see attempts to rewrite the outcomes of the Nuremberg trials, which was unanimous in its verdict regarding the Nazi crimes. Some countries are not just rewriting histories and glorifying those who killed civilians in the Baltic countries. Ten of southern people were designated as non-citizens and deprived of basic rights. The Kiev regime has been glorifying the Hitler accomplices, those who fought for Waffen-SS. There is barbaric shelling of civilian neighborhoods. In a number of European countries, Russophobia has become state policy. We will do everything to exterminate and to do away with Nazism. No matter how they call themselves, those who follow in the footsteps of the Nazi executioners are doomed. We will move toward genuine freedom, security, and we remember all those who died during this period. Glory to the Soviet soldier that defeated Nazism. Thank you. All right. So. Imagine a little bit of history in your lesson, huh? So the Russians were the ones that rescued the Israelis from being gassed to death by the Nazis, and now the Russians are fighting the Nazis again that the United States and the Western nations are funding in Ukraine all over again. What, what can I say? All right, so that was the first video. So, uh, isolation of Russia and China. Qing is now, well, this was huge. Did you know that China is now the number one producer of cars since we put sanctions on Russia? And I did see videos where the, all the cars are rolling all around the uh, Russian streets. Uh, where, and by the way, I, I think we're num like number four here in the United States and we're dropping down. Iran, I mean, Japan used to be, I think, number one or two. And then uh, who was the other producer? Germany. Yeah, well, Germany, <laughs> they can't produce anything. The United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. I mean, what are the German people going to wake up and realize that the United States wanted Germany deindustrialized? So they can't produce any cars anymore. So, and the Russians were their number one customer that was buying cars. And then the Germans sanctioned Russia, Russia saying, we're, we don't want to do business with you no more. So the Russian car industry is in free fall. I mean, it, they can't sell anything to anybody. I mean, who, who the hell wants to buy a German car? Their, their industry is not even going to be around in a year or two. Uh, where are you going to get parts for a German car? Where are you going to get parts for a U.S. car? Well, China is now the number one car seller. Imagine that. Uh, let's get back to a couple, uh, couple of these. This uh, OSINT Defender, I follow them, but you got to follow the enemy, right? And I consider them the enemy, but uh, let's see. U.S. officials have stated that the drone attack by Iranian-backed forces last night on several U.S. bases in Syria, and they say, and Jordan. Yeah, right. Uh, well, it, from what I understand, it's a tower that's just over the border of Syria that's overlooking the base and so that they can kind of keep an eye on things. Anyway, it's, it's so ridiculous that they say that we got a base in Jordan. We don't have a base in Jordan. Anyway, so... Uh, Tower 22 patrol and operations base in uh, northeastern Jordan was, which resulted in the death of three American service agents, is the most significant escalation by Iran. Iran had nothing to do with it. 
Yeah, it's Moran providing weapons and, and maybe giving money to these militant groups. I don't know for sure, but it sounds like they are. But Iran, they got no control over what these people do. You think the orders are coming out of Iran to these militant groups? It's just like, do you think the United States, even though we used ISIS against Syria, uh, a lot of people don't know we funded ISIS, do you think we had control over ISIS? Hell no. All we did was give them weapons and money and say, go, go, do your thing, man. Go, go. You know, we, we don't want any part of your decisions. And that's kind of what Iran's doing. So anyway... Um, the, the ballistic missile attack by the IRGC against U.S. forces at the Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq on January 2020. They further state that the U.S. and Allied response to this attack will be strong and swift. Woo! What are we going to do? Bomb them with F-35s? Well, you know what? They got Russian air defenses now. Do you think some U.S. planes aren't going to get shot down? Do you think that the thousands of soldiers in Iraq and Syria aren't going to get killed? These people are lunatics, man. All right, so let's just keep going. Uh, the New York Post claims Trump's team approached RFK Jr. about the potential U.S. UV VP bid. Boy, if, if he did, that would be great. I don't believe this. This is clandestine. However, they quoted unnamed sources and insiders. That always means it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a bullshit story. But anyway, if Trump, if you're out there listening, and I'm sure you're not, uh, RFK would be a great candidate or great vice president but i know you've already picked somebody else out i predicted ben carson we'll see what happens let's get back to my notes right. so russian plane brought down we already talked about this a while back uh, it was brought down i want to say about a week ago maybe maybe it was five days well, i tell you the news travels so fast i can't keep up with it all but anyways it was a huge cargo plane that had 65 uh uh Ukrainian prisoners on it and then Ukraine shot it down and so the investigation now was it French or or Patriot batteries that brought it down either way it's the West so we'll find out the Russian MOD they're, they're going to release their statement before too long Trump loses a case now can you imagine supposedly he raped a woman in a store in one of the, the clothing change rooms back in 1996 and he's going to pay $85 million. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> By a decision from New York. I, the Democrats are lunatics. I mean, he, well, can you imagine being on that jury? I would have been like, what the hell? I mean, even if it happened back in 1996, I mean, my God, we're looking at, what, almost 30 years ago. Who in the hell could prove something? There's no DNA evidence. There's no substantiated evidence. But they said, the, the ruling was that he defamed the woman. I think he called her a lunatic or something. Because she is a lunatic. But I mean, you know, call a spade a spade. You know, I mean, whatever. I mean, is that racist to call a spade a spade? But I mean, you know, holy shit, $85 million. So uh, let's get to the next video. Uh, this, is, this is after the death. We, we talked about the International Court of Justice and their ruling. This is the Israeli response. Let's watch that. Country. Israel has an inherent right to defend itself. The vile attempt to deny Israel this fundamental right is blatant discrimination against the Jewish state, and it was justly rejected. The charge of genocide leveled against Israel is not only false, it's outrageous, and decent people everywhere should reject it. Victory and achievement. This is how Israel took Friday's ruling by the International Court of Justice that did not order to stop the IDF operation in Gaza, asking though to minimize deaths and destruction. Before that, the ICJ has rejected Israel's request to drop South Africa's case against Israel completely, deciding Pretoria has all legal rights and authority to initiate such a case, meaning the legal fight will continue. We have been able to speak to some people here in Tel Aviv all those we talk to are in favor of the Israeli operation as they see it as an act of self-defense. On Thursday we have been at a demonstration in support of the IDF offensive with people even saying they prefer to see more airstrikes on the enclave and more intense military pressure. Let's take a listen to what people we have been able to speak to have to say. I am pleased that the operations in Gaza can... Okay, so that's Netanyahu on uh, on how he feels like uh, they're not going to listen to the International Court of Justice. 
They're not going to listen to the UN. They're not going to listen to the UN Security Council. They're not going to listen to the uh, uh, General Assembly. What's the point of the UN? We might as well just say that the United States, the West, and Israel are rogue states. The rest of the world, the rest of the world needs, needs to go their own way and just kick, kick the United States, Israel, and the Western countries completely out. And, just, and they already have to a certain extent. I mean, think about it. All the products manufactured in China. Russia's doing its own thing. They've, they've taken over all the Western businesses. They got their own Starbucks now. They got their own McDonald's. You know, they, they don't need any Western money in, in, in Russia no more. Uh, you've got all of the South America, I mean, Brazil. I mean, do you think they want to be a part of the West? No, they're all producing their own goods. They're all trading back and forth. Just, just tell the, uh, the United States to go F themselves. That's what they need to do. So uh, that's, that was that video. Let's get to the next. Uh, my God, this video is getting long. <laughs> There's so much going on. Like I said, watching the world burn. Where do you want me to go with all this? All right, so uh, it's been dead. I've been dead a long time, friend. I died a long time ago when I set foot in a land that wasn't mine to help carry out the agenda of evil men in charge. Whatever punishment comes to me is most likely deserved, but until then, I'm going to speak the truth to the best of my ability, there is only one thing I fear, and it doesn't come from the land of the living, but instead our Creator. Best thing you do is send me there. This is uh, No Kit Noctis Draven, and uh, you can follow him on on X. But I kind of identified with those words, and that's why I wanted to read them to you. You know, I broke my neck. I've I've been to war and back. I've had twenty eight car accidents. I, you know, I got no feeling in my hands. I got no feeling in my feet. What the hell have I got to worry about? You know, I mean, yeah, they, they could throw me in jail. I'll die within a couple of weeks in jail, and then nobody will know about me. That's fine. All right, so this, is, uh, this was another one. Assuming that Joe Biden is one-term president, I remember him for letting an additional 800,000 Americans die of COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, that, that happened. Giving billions of dollars and weapons to fascists in Ukraine to kill Russians and try to provoke World War III. Yep, he did that. Giving billions more to genocidal religious fanatics in Israel to ethnically cleanse Gaza. Very good point. Black in the empire. For everybody struggling to survive in America, never fear that we have the Dems who care about you. Well, I was talking about blacks. <laughs> they don't give a shit about blacks. Oh my God, the black people. Why in the hell they vote for them? I don't know. Focused on spending another $40 billion on Ukraine and billions more to help Israel with their genocide. Uh, and then, of course, I, I'll finish off here. I, I, I could keep going, but the video is getting too long. But we're just going to read this one last thing because this is an update on uh, you, 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 Ukraine that you need to know about. The Russians broke through the defenses of the Ukraine armed forces in Kupansk, in the Kupiansk, yeah. Direction and established control of her Tabivka village. There are also reports that Ukrainian armed forces have abandoned positions in Kislivka and Katalivka. Shit. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it's, I have a hard time. It's like reading Portuguese. It's just as bad. If this information is confirmed, the Osko River will be. The next line of defense for the Ukrainian armed forces in this direction. So, let's finish off the video right there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right, well, one more. Thousands of elite IDF soldiers belonging to the Golani Brigade have been deployed along the northern front after leaving Gaza. Well, yeah, this is, this is huge. I, I, so I'm glad I got to this. Uh, past few weeks, hundreds of tanks, APCs, and IPVs have been transferred to the border of Lebanon. Israeli media reports that the invasion of Lebanon will begin in the next two weeks. Well, I'm, what I'm seeing is it could be within the next week. So now we got Israel that's going to attack Lebanon. We got the United States, which is going to bomb Iran. Uh, it just... Why do you think I call it watching the world burn? <laughs> I mean, is there any other note here that I even want to talk about? Well, I guess not. So we'll finish off with a little video of uh, a Russian artillery. This is the new giant. All right, let me let me spell this to you because it's, it's I pronounce it giant. It's 
G G N A T or G I A T S I N T dash S. Self-propelled artillery. Remember, the Russians always call these the gods of war. This is now the best artillery on the planet Earth, and it's now been deployed in the war in Ukraine. Let's watch that video. Peace out. Stay free. Yeah. <laughs>